Well, joining me now is Michael Cooper, MP of St. Albert, Edmonton. Now, let's start by talking about what's in Bill C-7. What are the proposed changes to this bill, and how do they compare to the previous rules around medically assisted death? Bill C-7 removes a number of important safeguards that were incorporated into Bill C-14, which was the legislation that responded to the Supreme Court's Carter decision. Uh, some of those safeguards removed include a 10-day reflection period, so you could now have same-day death. Uh, it removes the requirement that there be two witnesses. Uh, when you execute a will, uh, you require two wit witnesses, and yet here, uh, when we're talking about ending one's life, this bill provides for a lesser safeguard. It removes the requirement that there be independent witnesses. Under this bill, uh, a physician or other medical professional attending to one's care could be a witness. That's problematic from the standpoint of potential conflicts of interest and uh, coercion, even if unintended, having regard for the power imbalance that exists between a physician and patient. And most significantly, this bill removes the reasonably foreseeable criteria, so there is no end-of-life requirement. Uh, so major changes, uh, major safeguards removed, and quite frankly, the evidence we heard was that uh, vulnerable persons could be put at significant risk as a result. Now, those are some concerns expressed by the Conservatives and multiple doctors. So how has the government responded to these concerns? Well, the government has responded by ignoring those concerns. Uh, despite uh, significant uh, concerns raised by medical professionals, by Canada's disabilities rights community, uh, the government uh, has proceeded to ram through the bill, through the House of Commons, and uh, now it's before the Senate where it uh, is encountering some considerable difficulty in light of those concerns. And what are the most recent updates from the Senate regarding this bill, sir? The bill is currently being debated at second reading, and uh, it's very unlikely that the legislation is going to be passed before the stay on the Declaration of Constitutional Invalidity uh, expires at the end of this week. Now, we're hearing that this bill is likely to be amended, as you said. So what are some of the proposed amendments you are hearing in the Senate regarding this bill? Well, we'll have to see what happens. No formal amendments have been put forward, but uh, there, there, I believe, going to be similar amendments that we put forward at the Justice Committee uh, to maintain some of the safeguards in Bill C-14, uh, as well as to provide additional safeguards, like ensuring uh, that physician-assisted death is patient-initiated, that this is never introduced by a medical professional having regard for testimony we heard from people like Roger Foley, uh, who is a severely disabled person who requires 24-hour care, uh, who was pressured into physician-assisted death on the basis of the cost of his care. That should not be allowed to happen. So I'm hopeful the Senate will move forward with a similar amendment to one that we put forward called, that we called the Roger Foley Amendment. Uh, at the same time, there are other senators who say, look, this is too restrictive and want to remove further safeguards. So there's uh, conflicting views in the Senate. But one thing that is consistent is almost no one likes this bill. All right, sir, we've got about 30 seconds left, but Justice Minister David Lametti has asked for a deadline extension from the Senate. How likely is this effort going to be extended, sir? It's really up to the court, the Quebec Superior Court. This would be the third time that uh, the government has gone to the court to request an extension, so we'll have to wait and see what happens. All right, Mr. Cooper, thank you again for your time today. Thank you.